Portugal, 400 miles of ocean breakers. Last barrier to gray waters of the Atlantic, rolling in to die amid the flying surf. Under this sea wall, the Phoenicians and the Greeks built their settlements. And from here came the sailors that made the maritime power that developed into modern Portugal. No longer typical of the nation, these fishing villages were its roots. Here, little has changed. The same beak-proud Phoenician craft, the same struggle with the sea, the same spirit that made Portugal. the children of these fisher folk are bred to the sea, it follows that their education, even today, must carry with it instruction in practical seamanship. Nevertheless, a passion for the sea is an element in all Portuguese life. Favorite excursion for Lisbon school children is to the city's famed maritime museum shrine of the great age of Portuguese exploration. For it was in Portugal that there began the first scientific study of deep sea navigation at a school founded by Prince Henry the Navigator. In its long history, this school trained generations of sea captains, the men who led this nation to discover so much of the world. At the beginning of the Renaissance, little of that world was known or charted. The Portuguese set out in 50-ton caravels to push back the frontiers of the unknown by their skillful exploration. The Azores in 1423, Cape Bogador in 1433, and on through West Africa crossing the equator in 1473. After the Congo, the Cape of Good Hope was reached in 1488, opening the way to East Africa, and in 1498, the sea route to India and the Far East. In the Western world, Columbus had annexed the West Indies in the name of Spain. But it was the Portuguese who landed expeditions on the North American continent in 1499, and the Portuguese who found the South American mainland a year later. During this bold period in her history, Portugal developed into a world power, and with her wealth, left a heritage proud in its building and its art. of the land that produced and sustained such great sailors. Mountains to the north, rich plains to the south, green banked rivers cutting through them to the sea. Most of it within a hundred miles of the ocean, the soil is fertile assured of water by the moisture-laden Atlantic breezes. On the rolling plains, 
of the River Tejo feed some of the finest beef herds in the country. Here, too, can be found the black bulls bred for bullfighting, watched over by mounted guardians whose rugged faces bear witness to the strong, individual character of this land and its people. All over Portugal, turreted castles give the key to a past of armies marching and counter-marching. Yet such was the resistance to foreign invasion that the nation's individuality has remained unchanged for centuries. Old towns, proud on their hilltops, full of sunshine and deep shadow. Today, a land with new ideas, Portugal's present is one tempered with the best of her great past. Though the old mills still turn their sails before the ocean breezes, much of agriculture is highly modernized. Mechanization is today's maxim, developed to the point where during most years the country is self-sufficient in wheat. Portugal is the world's greatest producer of cork, and the bark from her groves brings home one-third of her income from foreign trade. Another important crop, olives, which supply food and oil for cooking. Vines, catching the sun in their neat terraces above the Douro Valley, yielding wine famous on the tables of the world. To a porto, the harbor that gives port its name, this harvest travels the Douro in craft of such functional beauty that it would be sad indeed if progress were to replace them. second to speed should know that the passage of the Douro is tricky and its water shallow. And good wine, needing time to mature, is not a pressing cargo. Lisbon, capital on seven hills overlooking the river Tagus. The 16th century tower of Balaam, built as a river fortress, has seen the departure of many a great sea enterprise. Today, the tower still watches over those who come and go with the tide, for the fine anchorage of the Tagus is a meeting place for the world's ships. With many fine ships of her own, Portugal ranks high among maritime nations. Now, selling abroad almost twice as much as before the war, she passes on not only her own products, but also those of her great dependent territories like Angola and Mozambique. Like Venice, the other great city of merchant sailors, Lisbon lies at the very water's edge. Here is the seat of government and the heart of Portugal's commercial life. Above looms the great monastery of the Carmel, its roofless arches bearing witness to the destruction wrought to Lisbon by the earthquake of two centuries ago. Around the Carmel and the steep streets of the Alfama, much of that old Lisbon still remains. But it is lost in a metropolis that has doubled in size and population in only 50 years. This is the Lisbon of today and tomorrow, growing fast. Yet young in heart as Portugal is, 
the traditional dies hard, if indeed it dies at all. In the ring of Lisbon, the strange belly of the bullfight. But as custom and law forbid the killing of the bull, few are the deaths in the afternoon. Here the brave still command hero worship, though now other attractions rival their popularity. Today in Portugal, football has reached the proportions of a national mania. Lying at the very southern tip of Europe, this is a land whose climate is kind. And although used to the sun, the Portuguese cherish it. Hard working, they play hard, making the very most of sun, wind, and water. In work or relaxation, the traditional, the modern, the ultra-modern. This is the mixture that is Portugal. In the pavement cafes over wine and coffee, like anywhere else, there is talk of politics. After 30 years of struggle to bring his country out of crisis and debt, the man in the street makes the best use of his vote for he knows only too well the value of stable government. This spirit can be seen in the respect shown towards the man who in 1928 began to steer his country towards its present stable economy, Prime Minister Salazar. For the progress achieved since those days of crisis has changed the very face of Portugal. Nowadays, the traveler crossing the frontier from Spain finds much on his journey that is impressive. Along his route, gleaming gas stations and smart hotels. Traditional in spirit, though modern in style. Between them, new farms, workers' homes, schools and hospitals. Serving the community as a whole, a long-term pattern of highways and bridges. New dams and hydroelectric schemes, bringing power to industry and agriculture. Yes, everywhere are those signs of national development which mark a country striding forward. Among the callers to the coastal harbors is one still under sail, the school ship of the Portuguese Navy. On her decks and amid her ample rigging, young sailors are trained in the old tradition. In her defense forces, too, the best of Portugal's past goes hand in hand with her present. Old traditions, modern defenses. Portugal's air squadrons are equipped with NATO jets. These fighters also help guard the Atlantic approaches to Europe, commanded by the Azores Islands. The strategic position of this air and sea base gives defense and depth to an area of the Atlantic protected by the oldest unbroken alliance in history, the Treaty of Friendship that has bound Britain and Portugal since 1373. Indeed, the British Navy is no stranger to Portuguese waters. From the Bay of Biscay to the Baltic, the home ports of six NATO nations gain security through the defense of this vital triangle through which passes much of the food and raw materials for Western Europe. This sector of the ocean is today the principal patrol area of the small but efficient Portuguese Navy. Now, by her signature of the Atlantic Treaty, 
Portugal has assumed wider responsibilities. Her sailors know that now they are not alone. For now, the old Balaam Tower looks out not only upon the ships of the old ally Britain, but also upon those of many another nation in the Atlantic Alliance. Today, with many friends under many flags, Portugal realizes the strength of unity. Portugal's ways are those of peace. Her aim, only that all may go these ways freely and without hindrance in the common cause of human progress. To forward this aim, she applies her strength, drawn from a source as old as the nation, the resolution and will of an indomitable people. Ai, 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 menina, mas que linda que ela é. 